Hello, you are watching Serial of Midnight's Music Palooza Volume 4. My name is Heath, and since the last installment of this series, I've heard from a lot of you guys who said, I didn't know that you talked about music, too. I thought you were just a movie guy. Uh, I, am, I want to level up Serial at Midnight's coverage of music. I love music just as much as I love movies, but I haven't talked about it as much here, and I'm trying to change that because I really want to be a part of that conversation, and I want Serial at Midnight to be associated with quality musical coverage as well. So thanks for coming along on that trip with me. I've also been talking to some of this, the, the labels and distributors who have sent some things for me to review and talk to you guys about, which is awesome because it expands the scope of what we're able to do with these videos. Uh, it's no longer just like, well, here's what I bought. Now it's also, uh, here's what I bought and here's some brand new things that I want you to know about. So hopefully you'll be seeing some things for the first time here. And we're covering a huge spectrum. We're covering thrash, metal, hip hop, punk, uh, 60s and 70s bands that did not get their due back in the day and hopefully they're gonna get it now. Um, and just some real interesting obscure stuff, some compilations that are going to be up your alley, uh, some Bear Family stuff. Anyway, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so I'm just going to launch right into it, but uh, I'm excited about where the series is going to go. I'm going to try to do these once a month, and I'll supplement during the month with smaller music-related videos. Let's talk about a, a Blu-ray, Murder in the Front Row. Um, I'm going to get the title right. The San Francisco Bay Area Thrash Metal Story. This is a documentary about thrash. The history of thrash metal. They talk to all the heavy hitters, members of uh, Testament, Anthrax, Slayer, uh, Megadeth, Exodus, Metallica, Death Angel. Um, it's it's awesome and it's very very well done. It's adapted from a book, so there's actually some really legitimate, good research done behind the scenes. You know, there's there's a, there's a couple of different kinds of documentaries for this thing, right? So you can get like the fan documentary that's kind of like I love it because it's this, and then you get the story from the people who were there. That's the other kind. That's what this. It's kind of both actually, because it does have Brian Posehn is the host. He's the, well, he's the he's the narrator, and Brian Posehn is a huge metalhead. Uh, tells the story through animation, through interviews. Here, I'll show you the cover. You can freeze frame it, and then I will show you the back if you want to freeze frame that and read that. It does have a director's commentary. This documentary came out in 2019, 2019, but I don't think it had a disc release until just now from MVD. So go figure. Um, now fans can can have this. They can own this. Again, this is a Blu-ray, so it's in HD. Uh, it has a set of director's commentary. Does People ask me sometimes about subtitles. I don't cover those as well as I should. This one has English, French, German, Spanish, Greek, and it's English closed captions as well. Uh, if you've seen this, I want to know what you think about it. I think it's cool. My, I'll go ahead and show you too. My, uh, the package here is, is, I need to glue this back. Um, I'm going to spin out of another slight metal deviation. Jack Star's Burning Star. So, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was not familiar with this band. Uh, they existed in the 80s. Jack Starr is a guitarist who uh, was, he's, a, he's half French, I guess is, I don't remember how it breaks down. Well, he's half American, half French. And I think that Burning Star had a bigger success in Europe uh, in the 80s. And they had very modest, smaller success in the U.S., in the 80s. But the 80s stuff is traditional. I'm actually going to do a video just about Jack Starr's Burning Star. Because... They've just reissued, who is this? This is Global Rock, Global Rock Records. They've licensed the original, um, the, all the stuff from the 80s is back in print, basically. There's like six Burning Star albums that are available now, but this is a 22, 2022 album. It's their brand new effort. It, it sounds so evolved and mature from the stuff that I have been hearing from the 80s as I've been revisiting, or just visiting <laughs> their catalog. Uh, early stuff is like party rock, you know, it's like, Moon and June, you know, the simple rhymes, like they can't take my rock away, that kind of stuff. This is the, they have evolved into this like Dio, you know, dragons and supernatural. I mean, the, the, the name of this album is Souls of the Innocent. Demons Behind Me is the first song. Well, The Ascension is like the instrumental beginning and the Demons Behind Me. If you want to hear some of this stuff, check out Demons Behind Me and check out Souls of the Innocent. That gives you a good idea of what they sound like. But it's really good. If you like this kind of uh, of heavy metal, and you know, coming out of the melodic hard rock scene of the '80s, that's what this is. This is an evolution of the melodic hard rock scene of the '80s, and I think it's cool. Uh, we got some vinyl. Let me just skip over to vinyl here. So Cypress Hill has a new album out. Are there any Cypress Hill fans out there? It sounds like 
the 90s it sounds like like 1993 I, cypress hill was really big when i was in high school uh when i was a freshman uh they were they were really big and um this sounds like that it really does they they've they've gone back in a time machine so um what did you guys know about this they're still around 2022 album i'm gonna figure out where to put all this vinyl check this out the way of darkness a tribute to john carpenter uh this is basically uh it's claudio simonetti from goblin doing halloween well here i should just show you i'll just show you they're you know they're instrumentals now no but for me nobody's gonna top carpenter doing carpenter his songs are the best his music his approach is the best but it's nice to get a different take and a lot of these acts you know, claudio simonetti leather strap i'm uh, sorry leather strip um mythical vigilante it's got a it's got like this italian thing right there's this filter i don't even know how to describe it there's this filter that the italians kind of channel this music through and talking about goblin you know what that's actually oh i should show you the the actual lp no digital codes or anything like that that's a really pretty record though kind of uh i don't even know purplish clear purple splatter but it's a nice record uh and it's nice for alternate takes on the music that we already love all right let me let me skip over to cds because this is just the next logical step this, some of this was sent to me as well i think this is a tour it says tour edition so i don't know the availability of this but the album itself this is music for a witch this is a widely available on a lot of different platforms um this is from rust blade this is also from rust blade and uh it's, I know there's a ton of uh, Jalo fans out there. G Giallo? Jalo? I know there's a ton of you guys out there. And uh, I've been checking this out. So that's that's cool. Where should I... Oh, here. Let's keep the theme going. Also by Goblin. Uh, the original soundtrack to Deep Red by Claudio Simonetti's Goblin. Uh, Profondo Rosso. It's the Italian pronunciation. I can't remember, did this one here, here's the back, did this one have a cool, yeah, it did. Makes sense, right? Red, it's a clear red, not a opaque red. And it also has, what is this? Is this YouTube safe? Also, uh, I haven't even opened this yet because I wanted to show you guys on camera. Uh, this is Cat of Nine Tails. I, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that in, in Italian, but this is the enemy, Ennio, the enemy, the Ennio Morricone score for uh, Cat of Nine Tails. I, it's limited. Look at how limited this is. It's four. I don't 499 copies. I don't know what number I got, but it's the 50th anniversary. Also from Rust Blade. I think this was from Rust Blade too. Yeah. So uh, it's a smoke vinyl and a poster. Limited deluxe gatefold. Should we do it? Let's do it. Let's open it right here on camera. I'll save the hype sticker. All right. I'm going to make sure this is nice. All right. Here's our smoke Oh, that's nice. Check out the label, too. Oh, that's cool. So, side one, side A, has the actual label. Side B is just the cat. Very nicely done. Can't go wrong with Morricone. One of the best. Probably, I mean, I don't want to step on any toes. Morricone is probably my favorite composer, but I I, I don't know. Uh, oh, Nice. Very, very, very well done. Here's another. We're taking a hard turn here, but this is a. This was a record store day exclusive. This is. Uh, where are you, Jay Bennett? Jay Bennett was a, a Wilco member, and I, here's here's the thing. I don't know a lot about Wilco. I know a lot of people really into them. I've yet to really get into them, so this is my first exposure to that scene. And uh, and Jay Bennett was, you know, he he died young. 
and um, this was a Record Store Day exclusive, kind of commemorating him. There's a documentary about him called the same thing, Where Are You, Jay Bennett? This is actually the soundtrack. And if you picked this up on Record Store Day, it comes with the movie on DVD. Um, it's a two disc, two disc, uh, two two record set, two album, two LP set, and. My understanding is that this is still available. A lot of record store day stuff is kind of gone before the day is over because it's so. Some of this stuff's like 500 copies. I believe this is still around. So if you're interested in Wilco, if you're interested in Jay Bennett and these, uh, you know, kind of demos, and I mean, there's a lot of interesting things here. It's very singer songwritery, acoustic stuff, and, you know, introspective stuff. Um, check it out. Let's move into. Oh, this is cool. Um, the Mutants. What is the title for this? Curse of the Easily Amused. So I had never heard The Mutants before. Uh, also San Francisco, I believe. Um, early, early 80s. New Wave, punk, that thing. Whatever that thing. It's kind of hard to define a specific genre, but that's what this is. And so these are newly remastered, newly released recordings. Some of these have been released before. I think there's six here that have been put out before. But they are, um, they're cleaned up and they sound better than ever before. Oh, this the disc just fell off. That's great. It's because the little teeth on the hub are, are broken. So it's it's a U.S. mail problem. Uh, anyway, this stuff is great. So if you are into punk, um, they actually, this is really only their second CD. Uh, they put out a lot of stuff on like, you know, singles like 45s back in the day. It was super limited, so a lot of their stuff got collected on a compilation. Uh, it was Fun Terminal. They had an album called Fun Terminal, so that got reissued with basically everything they'd ever done. And I think that that's out of print, but you can find it digitally. It's like ten bucks or something uh, if you want to download the MP3 version of it. But this is the new thing, and it's songs that haven't had a previous release, and some different mixes of six songs that have. I like it. If you want to check them out, um, think, think, think. Um, what else? Too Much Too Soon, I think, is good. Anyway, here's the track listing. It's good stuff. I would, like, now that I've heard these guys, I'm like, art rock, punk rock. That's kind of what it is. Like, punk rock that's inspired by, this is a very specific art school kind of a thing. They would, when they would perform, see, this is why I fall down this rabbit hole. Right? I got to find more out about these guys. They would do, they would dress up in a particular costume for a theme for that performance that night. And just like just keeping it fun for themselves, I love that. That's very punk. The idea of like, what do we want to be today? And that's very cool. Let's also talk about this another band I had not heard of. This is uh, Curse of Lono. The album is People in Cars. They define themselves as cinematic Southern Gothic. Now they're actually I think they're British, but it is indeed cinematic Southern Gothic. And the lead singer doesn't really. He's got kind of this talky thing. It's almost like a Nick Cave kind of a thing. Just he's down here like this, talking a lot of lyrics, that sort of a thing. That's kind of his approach. But it's cool. Like it's it, when I first listened to it, I was like, I don't know what to think about this. But it grew on me. Check out the tracks. Um, let's see. Time slipping is good. You know what? No, listen to Alabaster Charlie and So Damn Beautiful featuring uh, Tess Parks, which is really good. All right, I've got four releases from Cherry Red. Uh, Cherry Red Records out of the UK that I want to talk about. They're doing such great preservation. It's not just UK music. It's also American music and just great stuff. So this is the latest Lux and Ivy collection. Dark Exotica as dug by Lux and Ivy. Um, it's a Cramps reference. It's more of a thematic uh, tribute to Lux and Ivy. So this is a two-disc set of Dark Exotica. For I think it's all from the 50s. Um, that was really when the Exotica movement was happening for the first time. So what's great about this one is that it's not a compilation. It's um, three full LPs in their entirety and then one side A. So uh, they are uh, from the Buddy Collette Septet's Polynesia album. Here's Polynesia. It's the full album. Then from the John McFarlane Sextet's Provoc uh, Provocatif full album then the next one the disc two is uh from stan kenton's cuban fire the whole side a i wish we could have got side b too but it's just side a uh and then um 
from Bill Russo and his orchestra's Seven Deadly Sins. These are very famous exotic albums. It's the whole Seven Deadly Sins. The whole album right there. So that's great. Um, I don't even know how to recommend this stuff to you because it's not like songs, you know. It's I mean, it's music and it is songs, but it's not like... Just check, Google it all. Check it all out. But this is great. Uh, and then from... Two from Grapefruits. Uh, I Stand Accused. This is the complete Mercy Beats and Mercy's 60s recordings. So they were the Mercy Beats. Then they changed their name to the Mercy's. Um, given by the name, right? They're coming out of the Mercy side sound. They're coming out of that early 60s. The same, you know, the Beatles came out of there. Like, oh, who do we just talk about? The Swinging Blue Jeans. Another band, same area, Liverpool. Same area. Uh, same style of music, beat music, but um, this is a cavern club, you know, that kind of thing. They go and play Germany. There are actually German tracks on here, the German versions of some of these songs because they were big in Germany as well. Uh, great compilation. It is uh, the first disc has 34 tracks and the second disc has 29 tracks. The range on this stuff is pretty great. Uh, if you are wondering, here, let me show you the band. It looks like one of the Weasleys, doesn't it? To me, it does. Uh, if you're wondering, like, the, so here's the standout tracks. By the way, all these Cherry Red albums, especially these Grapefruit and Strawberry, I like the fruit theming. They come with these booklets, and these booklets are dense with the story of the band. So check out the song Sorrow by the Mercies uh, and Beyond. They do the, the, so the Mercies, they do the Mercies and Beyond because they can, some of these collections continue past the, the group as we know them. But Sorrow is, um, okay, so in, a lot of times when we talk about these, we talk about how these bands were influenced by the Beatles or followed in the success of the Beatles. But here's an example of the Beatles homaging the Mercies. Uh, in George Harrison's It's All Too Much from Yellow Submarine, he says, with your long blonde hair and your eyes, with your long blonde hair and your eyes of blue, that's a direct uh, quote from Sorrow, which was uh, that's before that song, right? So that song is referencing the Mercies. Uh, great stuff. So check this out. Here's another. I'm, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch it up. Here's um, this is from Strawberry, which is also a cherry red sub label. Uh, the Foundations. This is this is the band. They were a UK-based rhythm and blues band, I guess, for lack of a better term. Baby, baby, now that I found you, baby, now that I found you, I won't let you go. That you know that song. You also know "Build Me Up Buttercup," probably from there. Something about Mary, but uh, so I'm listening to this compilation. It's basically everything they did. It's three discs. Uh, it's the Pie Anthology. It's everything on this one label. And some of these songs, I'm like, I know this, but it sounds different. And it's because their lead singer, Clem Curtis, uh, left the band, like, right at their success, like, they were peaking, and then they get ready to do another album, and he leaves the band. And so they replace him, and that's when the, the uh, Build Me a Buttercup um, singer comes in. And, and so I was like... Do I know the original version of Baby Now That I Found You? Or the re is this re-recorded version with a new lead singer? Um, but it's interesting. There's a live album here. A lot of their singles, or I guess all of their singles. And uh, some even some solo stuff from Clem Curtis from the 60s into the 70s. So a fairly complete anthology. Again, with those... Um, show it to you the, the the booklets that I love so much with all the information about the band and the tracks and the singles and finally from Cherry Red this is really interesting if you're not into the 60s scene this is 70s this is Bockdinkle which was a British post the, the kind of psychedelic 70s but psychedelic progressive rock more or less they recorded an album. It took them three years to get this album recorded. In fact, the, the story is tragic. It's a really sad story. Um, like, no one's heard of them. Uh, but they recorded this album, and it didn't get a lot of distribution. 
Uh, it was they mostly were successful in France. It's another one of those bands that had to leave the U. It was so competitive in the UK. So they record. They end up magically. That was seventy. What are the years here? I think it was seventy three or seventy four, and then uh, seventy three. Yeah, and then in seventy four, they somehow get another album. And there's bonus tracks. There's live stuff from a nineteen eighty two reunion, and then other appointments. That's the that's the third disc. That's the band. Well, and the stuff that the people who were in the band did after the band. So again, complete, like really complete. But if you've never heard of these guys, check out um, their big hit. I think it was uh, an appointment with the master. It was their big song. And it's very cool stuff. This is on the Grapefruit label. Uh, where should I go from here? This is a natural segue here. I think from Bear Family, Destination Beach. Um, I love these Bear Family compilations. They do one for the seasons. They do one at Christmas time, spring, summer. I, get, I don't know if they have one for fall. I can't remember if they do or not. Uh, but like every year we get a summer compilation from Bear Family. So this is the latest one and it's really great. 50s and 60s. Um, I'm going to recommend a track that I discovered via this, which is... I'm looking for it. Lonely, Lonely Sands, S-A-N-D-S, Lonely Sands by the Dunes. It's like a sad, exotica surf song. It's just like the idea. It feels like summer is over and everybody has gone home now and the beach is empty in music form. That's what it feels like. So this is great. Uh, check it out if you're into that. So those compilations are a great way to hear new things. This is interesting. I'm wondering how many of you guys are going to care about this. Uh, let me know. This is Freddie Slack. He was a boogie woogie pianist and band leader in the 40s. So all these songs are 40s. In fact, it says Mr. 5x5, Five Five, the singles collection, 1940 to 1949. And uh, it's basically two CDs worth of all this guy's tracks from this time period. And they're great. I used to make fun of 40s music because like on Sirius XM radio, there's a 40s, 40s on 4. And I was like, who's listening to that? These people are dead. <laughs> but as I've gotten more into noir and old movies and stuff, I really see the appeal of this. So if you're like me, this is available now. This is Mr. 5x5, Five Five, which was his nickname. Uh, similarly, here's another one that I don't, I don't know if this is for everybody, but it is for somebody. It's the Sammy Davis Jr. Singles Collection. This is 1949 to 1962. So... Sinatra, Dean Martin, the peak Rat Pack years, uh, all that's here. There are a ton of songs here. I think it's 75 songs, 78 songs on three CDs comprising most of the A's and B's released by Capitol, Decca, and Reprise, Reprise, Reprise labels from, uh, from those years. So get a booklet too with all the tracks information in it. It's, it's great stuff. Um, this, I'm, what do you, tell me if you guys are interested in this. So I had never heard of this guy, but uh, Johnny Gandelsman um, is like a violinist. And so this is his new album. And it's a lot of it's just like one guy with a violin. And sometimes he's collaborating with other people. Like all these, the names at the top are the collaborations, but it's like one violin. And um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what I think about it yet, but it might be up some of your guys. Maybe to have on while you're reading or something. I don't know. And then he also produced... Let me make sure I verify that. Um, the Hemingway soundtrack, the, the Ken Burns documentary on Hemingway, is the music, he's on this too, Johnny Gandelsman, and then a lot of other people too. Uh, here's the track listing for this. So if this is, I realize this is not going to be for everybody, but hopefully it's for somebody. Uh, and then I'm going to end our coverage here with something that I thought was a really odd but cool curiosity that is, it will easily slip, on, slip under the radar. It's actually the second disc like this. This is Spring Break Reunion, the swinging 60s. So this comes from Liberation Hall, which if you've been paying attention, was the company that put out the RoboCop TV, TV series that we just reviewed a couple of months ago, whenever it was, on Blu-ray and DVD. It was like their first Blu-ray and DVD release. They're mostly known for music, like TV show. Um, they're mostly known for music, and this this is another music-related release from them. So here's the story behind this. In 1987, uh, the, uh, the the they 
the festival promoters in Florida put on a spring break reunion with all these oldies acts, the idea of tapping into the 60s, the aging people from the 60s who had come to, like that was their spring break originated basically in the 50s and the 60s, right? So that's the idea of this thing. So they're like, hey, get back out. They were promoting tourism is what they were doing. Do I come to Florida, see these bands? So Peter Noon from Herman's Hermits was there. Strawberry Alarm Clock was there. The Association and Lou Christie, who does not sing lightning strikes in, the, in his set. And I was disappointed. But um, there were three days, I believe. I believe it was a three, like on a Saturday, three times that month. There may have even been four, but I think it was three. There was a 50s day, which that's the other DVD that's come out. And there was a 60s day. And I can't remember what the last one was. Um, but it ended up as a TV special hosted by Frankie Avalon. This is that TV special. It's like 47 minutes long, and then they cut to the bands. And it's weird to see, like, the association in the 80s, in 1987. Like, that's what's hard for me. And it's not bad, but obviously, like, that's not... They're not in their territory. Like, you place, you know, like... Incense and Peppermints is so incense and peppermints it's so evocative of like late sixties counterculture. You put it on the beach and the guys wearing like cut off like a cut off shirt, yeah, like a tank top or whatever. Like it's a everybody's wearing stone washed, you know, acid washed jeans and headbands and stuff. It's so eighties. And you're like, that's not what that's I don't picture this image with this song. But uh it's an interesting experiment and I don't maybe some of it works, I think some of it doesn't work. The associ- is it the association does a medley of oldie songs that aren't even theirs. They do the Beach Boys, and I'm like, you should probably leave those alone. And just you, you have enough songs. I really like the association, uh, but that's what this is: is this interesting 1987 experiment to bring the boomers back to the beach, not to be confused with the movie Back to the Beach, which did just come out on Blu-ray as part of the Paramount Presents line, uh, but bring the boomers back to the beach. Hey, what year is Back to the Beach? Uh, interesting timing there, right? It was like. Like a is a midlife crisis kind of a thing going on in the 1980s, but anyway, I I actually I think this is really cool because it's one of those things that culture is just going to forget about, like it never existed. So I'm glad that it's preserved on DVD because I don't know like what happens to this stuff when nobody's talking about it anymore. I I thought it was an interesting obscurity and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Um, all right, so that guys, I think that wraps us up for this music palooza. We covered a lot of grounds. What are you? What are you listening to? What's your new discovery? You interested in any of this stuff? I want to continue that conversation in the comments below. So, guys, thank you so much for checking out this music coverage. Support it with your thumbs up. So, if you're not subscribed to this channel, subscribing lets other people like it lets you two know to continue to promote this channel. So, please subscribe. Uh, click the notification bell so you don't miss any content. And thanks for being here. Thanks for checking this out, guys. I really appreciate. It. Take care. Till next time. I'll catch you later.